Okay, I am a company and I want to start using design, okay? What is the first step that I need to take in order of start to use design thinking? And the first step I would argue that is embracing the mindset of the designer. What does that mean? Let me break this in three parts. Okay, the first part that I want to make is that we need to shift our attention from our product and service to the customer. What does that mean? It means that we need to, to shift away from only looking at the way that we manufacture the product and start to evaluate the customer experience when he's using our product. Again, let me give you a hand-on example. Imagine that you are a luggage manufacturer and you are, you are manufacturing luggage before luggage was on wheel. Okay, now if you embrace the mindset of an engineer, with no offense to engineer or industrial designer that are different from design thinker, what you do is stay in the lab, in the company, in the research and development department and coming up with new ways to manufacture luggage, which means uh, making the luggage lighter, make, making the luggage a little bit brighter, or working on spec and try to improve those specs. Now, this is the way that conventionally we try to innovate, but when we try to embrace disruptive innovation, design thinking teaches us that we need to look at the experience of the customer. So, in using the same example on luggage, well, if you embrace the mindset of the designer, well, you would have left the building and going, for example, to an airport and say what was in the way to the traveler to enjoy their experience of traveling. Well, the first thing that you, you, you would have realized is that any time that, that they were moving, they needed to lift and carry their heavy luggage. So, obviously, in there, there is a pain point that might suggest different solution to luggage. And again, here the solution wasn't making a lighter luggage or a brighter luggage. Yes, that is better. But real, the real problem, the real pain in there is that if there were wheels into the luggage, that would enhance the, 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 the experience of the customer while traveling. The second point that I want to make here is that we need, in order to embrace the mindset of the designer, move from constraints to new possibilities. Many times when a company is trying to innovate, uh, there are the non-believers. They start by shooting down any possibility for value creation. So basically, they start with constraints rather than new possibilities. Well, the design thinking process teaches us that we need to diverge our thinking before converging our thinking. It means that even if it seems something completely away from the value proposition of the company, we don't have to discard it just yet. In the second part of the design thinking process, yes, we will become more rational, but in order to start the design thinking process, we need to open up new opportunities rather than be introspective, rather than say, no, it's something that is not related to the value proposition of the company. And the last point that I want to make that regards the mindset of the designer is, is something that is very difficult. It's something that really is outside the vocabulary of business, which means accepting failure and failing faster and cheap. What do I mean here? Is that many times, at least my experience working with, uh, with large corporation, is that managers uh, or people involved in, uh, in innovation believe that the new growth initiatives are going to su succeed 100% of the time. But I also work with entrepreneurs and many startups, and I know that if we are lucky, one out of five of startups are going to succeed. So, if that is happening in, in a small organization, chances are that even in a larger organization, only 
20% of new growth initiative are going to succeed. So if that is true, it's better that we embrace failure as a way to learn and to join an iterative way of value creation. And when I say, let me clarify this because it is a very important point, when I talk about failure, I'm not talking about the failure that breaks the bank, I'm talking about a failure as a way to learn. It means that we are creating very low-cost prototype and try to invite customer in the conversation and with their feedback we are going to improve the prototype and when we have a completely positive feedback then we yes we go into the manufacturing uh, uh, part and we produce the, the the final product so the three step on embracing the mindset of the designer is moving from product to the customer experience the second is not starting with constraint but with embracing new possibilities and third is accepting failure failing fast and cheap in order to learn